all right guys we have a new video today they just dropped the ban list for the attribute 4 event i think it's actually a pretty cool event uh, basically it's the four less powerful attributes most of the support in Yu-Gi-Oh rolls around light and dark monsters and a lot of the extra deck monsters like the staple extra deck monsters are light and dark monster like access code talker and IP mascarine and stuff like that so you will have to adjust your decks and play a different style of Yu-Gi-Oh uh, tier limits is out thank god we get a little break uh, which is, you know, it's nice. A lot of people like the mirror. Some people don't like the mirror. Some people don't like to play it at all. But we get a little break here. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to show you a variety of good decks that you can play. Uh, starting with Legendary Ocean. I love this deck. This is the deck that I, I've i just been playing for the last few seasons. Uh, it's actually a really powerful deck. It loses absolutely nothing. I'm actually kind of shocked that they didn't get rid of anything. Uh, because... I mean, the deck is kind of oppressive, honestly, and, and in this particular, like, um, game mode, I think it's really good. And on top of that, they actually, one of the only decks that they actually hit is Marincess, which was shocking. I don't know why they hit Marincess. Like, I think Marincess would have been strong, but I don't think it would have been, like, outrageously strong. So, the big enemy of this deck is Marincess and Tier Limits, because they're water-based. But without them, this deck is just disgusting. So as long as you don't face like a mirror match or another water attribute, you pretty much can break any board and can win most duels. Uh, the only thing, again, that you've lost is a couple of floodgates. But for the most part, this deck is really, really, really going to be strong um, in this in this particular event. All right, next up is Medolches. I actually think Medolches is going to be outrageously good. Uh, they didn't sustain any hit whatsoever. Uh, you can make the argument that they actually lost Zeus because, I mean, Zeus is very important for the deck, but Zeus is just kind of like a blanket way to out a bunch of, like, to blank, a blanket way to out a board that's very def difficult for them to out. Uh, but it's not a totally mandatory card. The deck has a ton of interruptions. It just got all of the new Vernasloof stuff, which is really good for the deck. I'd say the big, like, issue with this deck honestly is that it's it's actually quite high rarity so if you don't already own it i mean you can see this extra deck it's like every single card is a ur which is kind of outrageous um you have sistart which is not a ur and then you have the infinite track which is another ur like this deck is very very um, high rarity and i'd say that's one of the big big issues with this deck outside of that i actually think it's a really awesome deck and it might actually be the best deck in the entire in the entire event I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not completely set on that statement, uh, but it, I think it's definitely going to be very strong. Like I said, those Vernus Loops are insane. They help the Medolce's uh, mill. On top of that, you have the Ishizu cards, you have the uh, Vernus Loops, which help trigger that. A lot of them are fairies, which is very good. Uh, you have a million different small world lines. Like, this deck is really, really, really sick. I definitely think you guys should try uh, Medolce's. All right, next up we have Rika's. Uh, Rika's is another deck that's really good. They're mostly water-based. Most of the plants in Yu-Gi-Oh! are Earths, uh, which is quite helpful. The only thing you're really missing out on is the Link 4 uh, Sun Avalon monster, which can be a decent boss monster for you, uh, but but it is unfortunately banned. Outside of that, the deck is functions as normal. Uh, you don't actually go into the... Uh, not the Rank 4, I meant to say... Yeah, the Link 4 Sun Avalon monster. You actually don't go into that monster that much. Uh, so it's actually quite nice. Um, that That is really the only card that's hit. The deck is very strong. You've still got... You've st you basically have the regular, uh, normal Rika stuff, which is allowing you to tribute your opponent's monsters to do all types of crazy effects. You can tribute your opponent's monster, steal their monster. You can tribute their monster, uh, just outright tribute their monster. You basically get to tribute your opponent's monsters with the field spell. Uh, to trigger off your Rika effects, which is just, it's really good. It's like Lair of Darkness, but in a lot of ways, actually significantly better uh, because a lot of the in-archetype cards actually want you to tribute and, and force you to tribute to do various things. Uh, this is another water-based deck that's going to be like quite strong. It's also got some of its new cards, uh, like the Princess and stuff like that. And you can get some of these just by playing the solo mode, which is really cool. Uh, the only kind of, again, there's really no drawback to this one because most of it is just staples. Uh, the main deck is pretty cheap, and then the only thing you're going to have to splurge on is the the Rika Queen, um, the level 4, and you've got the other Rika here, which is the um, uh, the level 8, and this you really have to play, and then of course you've got the level 6, uh, which you do go into occasionally. Honestly, you could probably drop uh, each of these down 
uh, some to like two and two and you could probably save some more money uh, some more dust I should say but overall it's a fairly strong deck probably one of the stronger decks again in this event uh, they didn't hit it really all that much so I, I think it's definitely a very very strong option all right next up we've got Salamangrate Salamangrate is another fairly good option uh, you've got all of the none of the Salamangrate cards got hit whatsoever we recently got Gazelle back to three which is really cool because it helps you combo off um, the only thing that you lose in the main deck is uh, the, the, the gr I forget her exact name, but it's the uh, Lady Debug, I think. She was dark, so you technically lost Lady Debug. Uh, but the deck is actually pretty much complete. You lose Access Code Talker and Lady Debug. Uh, but it's not the end of the world because you have Trans Code Talker plus Update Jammer. One's a Wind and the other one's Fire, so I mean Earth. So you still get to keep those. Again, really, you only lost Access Code Talker. That's pretty much it. But you do have Pyro Phoenix, which is another way to sort of end games, which is really cool. Um, th obviously, there's no reason to use Pyro Phoenix in, in regular Salamangrates because Access Code Talker is better in most ways. But uh, this is kind of your alternative. And again, the deck didn't really get hit. Uh, so I actually think it's a, a fantastic option available to you. Uh, definitely give this deck a try. It's very good. It's it's mostly a budget deck because you pretty much get all of these cards if you buy the structure deck uh, so if you just again if you just purchase three structure decks you get pretty much everything that's seen here on the screen other than the staples all the staples you've got to craft but like the staples are like abyss dweller let's be honest everyone has abyss dweller in this format anyway uh same thing with appaloosa like everyone has this and then like okay everyone has baguska everyone has droplets this like most of these things you already have so if you just buy a couple of structure decks you basically uh, have this pretty competitive deck and then you just make back the gems on uh, just playing the event so it's definitely a, a fairly good option all right next up we've got earth machines uh, this is another really really good option like uh, this deck uh, usually you can actually mix this deck funny enough with the vernus loops which i didn't but you can definitely mix it with the vernus loops uh, if you already have them if you open the pack it's fantastic you can pretty pretty easily acquire them uh, but this deck is really good it only really loses two cards one is the machina uh, i forget his name it, it starts with a u but it's basically if he gets added to your hand you get to uh, a special summon him i believe that's that's his effect and then he gets to send one so that card unfortunately isn't here and then of course the uh, large machina monster which is the one that you can summon by banishing machina monsters out of the great or uh, machina monsters out of the graveyard uh, so those two unfortunately are not available uh, that part does kind of suck but uh, I think for the most part the deck is actually fairly complete and and the other thing is you can't go into Zeus so like like this again there's always a little bit of a drawback in every single deck uh, except for legendary ocean which is completely exactly the way it is uh, but yeah this deck has a few little drawbacks here and there but for the most part this deck is pretty much complete and it does exactly the same thing that it does in um, in regular ranked so it's, it has a nice uh, it has very very good combo potential and if your opponent mills your cards with their vernus loof slash um, it's Shizu card is actually fantastic for you because you have a ton of graveyard effects so it actually helps you and of course the deck is, is fairly strong it has a lot of resiliency it has access to Therion King Regulus there aren't a ton of negates in this particular format but this is very much available uh, you've got the Citadel which can basically right your opponent's board and come back every single time it's very resilient it comes back over and over and over um, and then you've got the, just the general infinite track engine which is very very strong you have easy access to abyss dweller and uh, a variety of other useful uh, like um, rank 10 monsters uh, but yeah definitely overall very very strong deck all right next up we've got prank kids i never thought i'd see the day but this deck is back um, all four attributes that it plays are not light or dark um, the deck is really strong like yeah you only have one meow meow but let's be honest getting to Raigeki and Raigeki your opponent's board twice is still very very strong on top of that if you play parallel exceed uh, you can use any prank kid basically if you have any prank kid in hand and a uh, parallel exceed you normal any prank kid uh, link it into meow 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 points down you get the special summon parallel exceed and then you have access to some of the most powerful rank fours ever printed which are abyss dweller and baguska 
uh, you're not locked into anything because that is literally your normal summon. So you have not activated Pandemonium yet, and you have ba your board is basically a double Raigeki with a Bistweiler or Baguska. You choose, you decide on which one you want, which is like it's 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 really really powerful. Basically, a Bistweiler plus double Raigeki, really really strong. Um, yeah, the deck is actually quite resilient. Uh, it's always been a very very strong deck like the second they released Meow Meow it became like an outrageously good deck But it's always been a fairly good deck um, And of course again, it, it, it's essentially didn't get hit on this uh, Ban list like yeah, it lost the same staples every other deck lost which is access code talker and um, IP stuff like that like that's what it lost but let's be honest none of that matters because literally every other deck lost that too uh, and really did not lose anything in its main deck. Uh, the only thing that kind of hurts the deck is that Meow Meow is gone. Uh, there's probably a more like creative build that you can play with this. Like you can play maybe the uh, Arch, the Nemesis monsters to uh, get the uh, Prank Kids back into your deck, which is which can maybe work. But the problem is you actually don't have access to um, Colossus, unfortunately, because he has a light. But overall, I think the deck is fairly good. Again, you could double Raigeki, you can go second. Um, the deck does still a lot um, with a very, with a little. It does a lot with a little. I mean, it literally, just it, it's a full combo off of any one normal summon. So the deck is really, really strong. Uh, definitely one of the decks to contend. All right, last but not least, we've got Phantasm Spiral. This is actually a budget deck. Um, uh, the reason it's a budget deck is because the entire extra deck doesn't matter. This could all be like like normal slash common cards it literally doesn't the extra deck doesn't matter the fact that there's urs in here is irrelevant i literally just put card i just filled up this extra deck you don't use your extra deck uh you technically do use your extra deck because you banish it off of pot of extravagance but you, you don't actually use the cards in the extra deck so they could literally be anything and then the only cards that you're using are for the most part like staples that you probably already own terraform you probably already own lightning storm you probably already own like most of the URs in main deck that you you probably own Metaverse, you should probably own it if you don't already own it because it's just a, a good card in perm you probably own. And then if you don't own these, just play other trap cards that are good, like play Compulsory Evacuation Device, uh, play something else. So this deck is good because you literally, first of all, it's good because it essentially didn't get hit number one. Uh, but it's actually really good because, again, you don't actually have to spend any of the gems that you get from this any of your gems or your ur dust or anything like that that you get from this event you don't have to spend it on um, on building a deck for this event uh so that's what's kind of awesome you can just save play a deck like this and then you basically win uh the deck basically again it, it's a control deck uh, but i built it a little bit more to go second because uh, i think it's actually quite powerful going second um you can still you play trap trap decks very easily going second because there are just certain uh, traps that are really really good going second like solemn strike um, the extra deck I'm not even go through like I said it doesn't matter uh, but yeah the deck is actually good they didn't hit macro cosmos which if you paid close attention is actually good against virtually every other deck that I've shown thus far it literally I think beats pretty much it beats Medal Chase. Uh, because I mean everything gets banished and then they're like their Vernus loops and their Ishizu cards just totally like lose value anytime they detach everything gets banished uh, it beats uh, Salamangrates because um, uh, you, when you use Gazelle you send to the graveyard it gets banished and said um, the, the the little one spinny doesn't come back it beats that deck. It beat like almost every Rika's. You don't get the graveyard negate. Like it, this card literally beats every other deck in that we've discussed thus far, uh, which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah, Medol Chase, Rika's, Salamangrates. It beats. It beats every deck. Earth Machines. This 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 card right here literally outs everything. Um, as a matter of fact. You could even play Dimensional Fissure if you wanted to. If you want to cut some cards here and play Dimensional Fissure, you can. Like I said, this is probably like a budget option. Just play some more Dimensional Fissures, and then again, you're good. Like just play those. It literally outs every other deck in the entire uh, the entire thing. Uh, so the only thing that this doesn't out is the only deck that it doesn't out is unfortunately if somebody else is playing Legendary Ocean. But that literally doesn't even matter because you naturally out that. Because your deck is a water attribute, so you just play around everything that they're doing regardless. Um, but yeah, this deck is actually like incredibly, incredibly good against 
um, the meta in attribute four and uh, number one it's like the event it's very good against the meta in the event and then it is a budget deck it's like almost free you're using staples and then essentially just one you are the only thing you need to craft is the ocean dragon lord and i'll be honest with you this is totally option it's kind of like a tech option that i've been uh trying out recently uh but you don't actually have to main deck this like the only reason i play this is because you can search it for free off of fish sonar and then normal summon it and then out your opponent's board but you don't actually have to play this card whatsoever this deck is if we're being honest this deck is pretty much all staples and then a bunch of you a bunch of r's and sr's like it doesn't even matter all of these cards are r's and sr's uh, except for the few staples that you have to play that you already probably own uh, but this is the last deck that i'm going to show you i think it's very very good and if you have any other suggestions anything i've missed definitely put in the comment section down below because i feel like i definitely missed something but thank you so much for watching la, 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 la.